your goodness in me nourish my soul all the more till your love overflows into my home for I'm happy in the fountain hello and welcome again to marriage in the fountain so in our first session, we laid the foundation of the picture that we'll be using all throughout our sessions. And in this particular session, we're going to briefly ask the question, uh, what fulfills me? Am I happy with me? Um, Rob, take us there into the top of the fountain. Okay. And, yeah, and Garth, as we, we said in the last uh, session, we, we talked about the triangle. Yes. And that the most important part of the triangle is me and Jesus. So that's me in the top uh, part of the fountain. Yeah. And the question that I have to ask myself is, is do I like me? Good question. Yeah, it is a good question because yeah. remember we come into the kingdom and we, we, we don't come in perfect. Mm. We come in broken. Yeah. And so being a Christian means that I need to grow and I need to change and I need to become like Jesus. Yes. And, and part of that whole process is I need to stop being the old me. In fact, the Bible says I've got to put the old me to death because that's going to cause problems in, in, in my becoming like Jesus. Yes. And so as we move into this top part of the, the fountain and, and we begin to ask the question, and I, I would ask everybody, do you like you? Yeah. It's a real question because if I don't like me, it must be pretty difficult for somebody else to like me. Yes. <laughs> and it's pretty impossible for my spouse or anybody else to make me likable. No, and, yes. and, and so many people come into marriage believing that their spouse will make them better. Yeah. Okay, and, and, and that, that isn't true. Your, your spouse can help you to develop and to grow and to become, but in essence, your Christ-likeness comes from Christ. Yes. And the Holy Spirit is working inside of us. Yeah. And we saw that in the last session was, you know, keep on being filled with the Spirit. Keep on being changed into the likeness of Jesus. Yeah. So when it comes to this part of, of our lives, we, we, we're asking, so what don't I like in my life? It's a real question, and it's, it's an honest question that most people don't want to ask. Yeah. And there may be things in my past and in your past that we've come up against that are strongholds in our lives mm. that we need to deal with. Why? Because they've become a blockage, yeah. and we can't move on. And, and where are we moving on to? Well, we're moving on in the Spirit into the fruit of the Spirit. Yes. So I'm moving into that place where, where uh, I become loving, kind, gentle, faithful, all the fruit of the Spirit. Yes. All the way down to self-control. And I, I always find that that's interesting. It's at the bottom. So it's not a legalistic thing that... You know, I, I control myself to do these things. No. That actually comes when I'm loving and kind and gentle and faithful and long-suffering and all an the rest of it. Now. It's an outflowing of that. Yeah. And so when we're in this part of the, the, the fountain, we're actually coming before the Lord and saying, Lord, this is who I am. Who do you want me to be? Yes. Because many people think that if they do something, it changes who they are. So like if I get a degree, it will change my character. It doesn't. If I get married, well, it will certainly question my character or expose my character, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that would make me more Christ-like. Yeah, definitely not. Okay. In fact, there's a, a talk by a guy or a series in a book uh, by Gary Chapman, Sacred Marriage. Yeah. And it's always such a good title and theme. And the whole theme of it is... Um, I used to be such a wonderful person that uh, before I got married, you know, <laughs> because, you know, I could make those decisions and it didn't bother anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I could do, change my schedule any way I want. I didn't have to communicate and nobody ever complained about it or whatever, you know, yeah. but I never realized how selfish I am until I got married. Absolutely. But now suddenly it comes to the surface, yeah. which means Lizette makes me this Muslim. You know, <laughs> but it has always been there. Yes. And now it comes to the front. Yeah. And that's one of the things. But the, the real hard part for me is, is when I want Julie to fix me up. Yeah. That's not her job. Mm -hmm. 
Your spouse is not there to make things better or to make you better or whatever. That's God's job. And that's a job that takes place between the Holy Spirit and I, where he wrestles with me, where he reveals things to me, where he convicts me, where he leads me, where he guides me. And he starts saying, Rob, this has to change. Mm. Um, and, and one of the things that I, I want to share with you, short testimony. Um, as you know, I, I grew up with ADHD and I was labeled as the, the dunce of the class. Um, and so today they give people a nice label, then you were just stupid. Sure. And, and so growing up being stupid made you very defensive. Mm-hmm. It prevented you from doing certain things. You didn't take things on in case it exposed your stupidity. Mm-hmm. And your life became more and more limited by this label that the world had put on you. And, and um, I took on a new identity of being physical. Because I couldn't handle the identity of being stupid. Mm -hmm. So I became sporty and I played sport. But when this happened, my identity went. Mm. Because I built my identity around the things that I did and not around my character. And so then I had to sit down with God and say, all right, God, who am I? And I was already married. I already had children. And now I'm asking the question, God, who am I? And, and it was really late in life, but it was better late than never. <laughs> and and, and the, the answer is, you're my son. And as my son, these are the characteristics of the family of God. And these are the things that you need to deal with. And, and yes, it takes time. But as time has gone on, I've realized I've begun to like myself instead of trying to hide from who I am, I'm wanting to become what God wants me to become. And it's a real shift that we've all got to go through at some stage in our lives because we've all believed at some point there was something radically wrong with us. Um, And and yet God comes and he says, I can deal with your character. I can build it up. I can shift you to where you need to be, but you've got to do it with me up here. It's not Julie's job. Yeah, It's not even your job's job. Now it would be (laughs) wonderful to have Julie in the seat right now and to ask what did you experience in marriage since Rob started having these revelations in his relationship with God? Absolutely. Because that would make a drastic, drastic change. Yes. And it's not like your budgeting changed. No. And your communication skills became your identity changed. From the inside. And in essence, your relationship's going to transform. Absolutely. Yeah. And there, there, there is a confidence that, that comes in. I may not be the world's cup of tea but I'm actually in a good space with my father. Yes. And that's a huge difference. It's called peace. Yeah. And, and we read in scripture so often, you know, the peace that passes all understanding. Um, and the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. All of these scriptures suddenly become real because now God is in fact charging my batteries yes. and not Julie trying to ju- charge my batteries. Yeah. Makes a huge difference. Yeah. There's a good friend of ours um, who once said it so blatant to me. He says he had a conviction that he made his wife his idol. You must make me happy. Mm. You must settle the peace in the home. You must fulfill these things in my life. And suddenly God said to him, but what is she? Look to me. You know, I'm the one who brings you joy. Um, Now, certainly, a home with less conflict, a home with better communication, (laughs) with things worked out, is going to be a better home. So there's things to do. Mm. But at the heart of it really is, am I happy with who I am with God? And, you know, it doesn't matter how happy my home is. If I am unhappy in myself, it doesn't change who I am. In fact, I probably sour the atmosphere of the home when I'm feeling unhappy with myself. Yeah. Yeah. So I would challenge everybody before we even move any further is to be able to ask yourself the question, do I like me? Mm. And, and if I'm not liking me, what, well, do I need to spend some more time with God and more time with the Holy Spirit, allowing him to rub off those things uh, or that, that have caused me not to like me? 
And also to be able to recognize that God has, whether we like it or not, given us Holy Spirit. He lives inside of us. Yeah. And he's never going to be satisfied until we transformed into the image of Jesus. Absolutely. It'll, it'll be a fight for the rest of your life if you resist him. Yeah. It'll not be a comfortable place. But the moment we start moving into that, it starts to affect the next tier. And, and we, we see the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the gentleness, the faithfulness, the self-control increasing. Yes. And therefore, the marriage becomes a safer place because I'm, I'm not demanding of Julie all the time to make me feel better about me. And she's not demanding that I make her feel better about her, but that we can bring where we are together and enjoy one another.